A lot of damage control coming out of Coinbase. CEO Brian Armstrong coming out in defense of their staking service. Paul Grewell, their legal, their chief legal officer, also also coming to bat for this. Do we really do we do we need to be concerned? Are they just are they trying to just kind of fan the flames so that people don't go rushing for the exits? Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a great weekend. So look, we all saw the news, Kraken getting hit with the $30 million penalty from the SEC. Coinbase not missing a beat. They are out. Brian Armstrong, Paul Grewell, they are doing damage control. But why? Right? I mean, if there's nothing to worry about, if you're not doing anything sketchy, what does it make a difference? What does it make a difference what the corporate-owned media is saying? Well, what, what does it make a difference what the implications are? Because at the end of the day, if you're not doing anything wrong, there really shouldn't be anything to worry about. But the problem is this. This type of narrative causes a rush to the exits. And Coinbase needs to make sure that their customers do not rush to the exits. Anyways, that's that's just my opinion. February 10th, we have this tweet that comes out of Paul Grewell, who is the chief legal officer at Coinbase. So here we go. At SEC, Gov has made a number of misinformed assertions about staking over the past few days and asked a number of misguided questions. Let's set the record straight point by point. There's a lot of FUD to cover. Okay, so he's laying the groundwork here, a lot of confusion. The SEC doesn't know what's going on. And don't get me wrong, I am in no way, shape, or form a proponent of the SEC. February 12th, Brian Armstrong puts out this tweet. Coinbase's staking services are not securities. We will happily defend this in court if needed. Let's dive into the blog post that he is referring to that explains away all of this. It's all a misunderstanding. It's all a misunderstanding. Coinbase's services are not securities, and here's why. Staking is not a security under the U.S. Securities Act, nor under the Howey test. Trying to superimpose securities laws onto a process like staking doesn't help consumers at all and instead imposes unnecessarily aggressive mandates that will prevent U.S. consumers from accessing basic crypto services and push users to offshore unregulated platforms. Okay, before we continue, before we continue, the stage is set, okay? The stage is set. Because you see, by making sure that the business stays here in the US, we can ensure that there's going to be proper regulation looking out for the little guy. And we've all seen how that regulation has worked out. I mean, everybody remembers what happened during the dot-com bubble. Everyone was looking out for the retail investor back then. I mean, come on, pets.com? Who didn't think that was gonna be amazing? You know, and then 2008, the mortgage crisis with the with the repackaged uh, with the repackaged mortgage securities, the, the, those were the institutions that were selling those products to other institutions and ended up completely wrecking retail and not just retail, but they wrecked their own. They, they wrecked people in their own space. I mean. This is this bullshit that regulation somehow is meant for the little guy and to protect people. This is total crap. All this is is ensuring their moat and it reduces competition. That's anyways, that's my take on regulation, but it doesn't make a difference. I will continue on with this article. Here we go. As more of the crypto ecosystem adopts proof of stake over the more energy intensive proof of work protocol, that's actually not true. <laughs> uh, crypto users around the world are being introduced to the benefits of staking. You know what the benefits of staking are? You, you hold the coin, okay? And then what happens is for holding the coin, you just get new coins. You get more coins for doing absolutely nothing besides holding them. That sounds economically sustainable. Getting regulation wrong could do serious harm to the development of the crypto industry in the US. So I wanted to set the record straight and lay out the basics. Make no mistake, everything besides Bitcoin is an affinity scam. It's very, very simple to see. Utility tokens do not require a token to actually perform their function. 
The utilities that they offer can easily be paid for with something else. The token that is actually created to sell you these products is complete bullshit. Anyways, I've already gone on that rant a million times. It makes no difference. I, I'm just pointing out the narrative that they're trying to set that this is going to hurt the crypto industry. No, no, no. What this is going to do is it's going to discourage low-level scammers. That's what it's going to do. Staking allows anyone anywhere to contribute to the security of a blockchain and to be rewarded for their efforts. But while anyone can participate in staking activities, the average crypto user will generally use a service provider like Coinbase to keep the servers running and software up to date. Okay, we're gonna stop right here. I've never hidden it. I was a shit coiner um, before I was Bitcoin only. And as a shit coiner, I installed many different shit coin wallets, um, wallets that include built-in staking services, okay? So what Coinbase is doing here is that they're essentially, they're trying to create the idea that their platform is, is needed, right? They're, they're doing the big work, the heavy lifting here, okay? Because what's happening is, is that they're keeping the servers running and the software up to date because you shut down your laptop every day when you go to sleep, right? All of your electronics just get shut down. The reason why I'm making this comment is because it is the, again, just stupid shit um, that where they're trying to validate their own service. Um, I had staking software and all it is is wallet software. Okay, it, it's really what it is. It's just wallet software. And then what you do is you unlock the wallet and you check a little box for staking. And then all of a sudden, every day or whatever it is, based on the amount of coins that you have, you'll see a transaction come in where all of a sudden you just get more coins. So this idea that you need a centralized service to provide staking services um, for shit coins that offer that that are proof of stake, okay? You just have to install their wallet and and let it run, okay? And then you don't need to use a third party like Coinbase. But I'm not trying to convince you into proof of stake or shit coining. I'm just trying to let you know that the narrative they're setting is false, and they want you to think that you need them but you don't. The reason your crypto earns rewards while staking assets is that you are putting your crypto to work in exchange for a payment from the blockchain itself. Cryptocurrencies that allow staking use a consensus mechanism called proof of stake to ensure that all transactions are verified and secured without a bank or payment processor intermediary. Now, if you didn't quite understand that, I'll, I'll, explain, it, I'll explain it differently. The more coins you have, the more coins you receive. And some of these shit coins uh, attach governance tokens to this type of stuff. So essentially, the more of the shit coin you have, the more governance tokens you get, which means that when it comes time to vote for some stupidity on their blockchain, the person, the person or group or entity that has the most governance tokens will get to dictate how the network runs. <laughs> Sound familiar? Sound like the system you're currently living in with fiat? That's because it is. Uh, anyways, at Coinbase, our core staking service is offered through our Coinbase Earn program, which allows users to stake certain assets for a reoccurring payment from the blockchain protocol. Interesting. So you're a centralized platform. You're definitely a central entity that is offering an Earn program by using these different tokens. So indeed, Coinbase does not own these tokens, but that EARN program, that's their platform. And if you're putting your tokens on that platform, you are expecting a return, are you not? This is starting to get really gray. <laughs> I would not wanna be a part of this Coinbase shit show. Anyways, let's continue. Is staking a security? Staking is not a security under the US Securities Act, nor under the Howey test which the SEC uses to determine whether an investment contract is a security. The Howey test comes from a 1946 Supreme Court case, and we are going to get into the Howey test a little bit after. Staking services do not constitute an investment of money, even under an expanded definition that includes any specific consideration that is given up in return for a separable financial interest. Staking services do not constitute an investment of money. Well, that's strange, because here there's a reward rate for Algorand and Cardano and Cosmos, ETH, DAI, SOL, 
Tether. Strange. Let's go back to that. Uh, let's go back to that article. Staking services do not constitute an investment of money. So do I just send Coinbase an email and they'll just start giving me five percent? No, that, that that's not how that works. Okay, okay, just just checking. So so I'm assuming I would have put coins there and then expected a return. Second, staking services do not meet the common enterprise prong of Howie because assets are staked on decentralized networks or they're staked here in this centralized Coinbase platform. That, I'm just confused. I'm, you know what? I'm a Bitcoin maximalist. I just don't understand the shitcoin tech. This is my problem. I don't get it. Uh, that's too bad. My loss. Stakers are only connected by blockchain technology and they validate transactions through a community of users, not a common enterprise. Oh, okay, yeah, that... That does explain staking when you as an individual are staking with your own little with your with your own little staking wallet. But when you are offering a platform on the web for people to stake their coins with, even if they are not moving their coins, your centralized platform is doing the work and providing the return for them. Finally. Staking services do not pay rewards based on the efforts of others. So how, where does this yield come from exactly? Where does this staking, the, this 2%, where does this come from? Whose efforts is that from? Service provider staking services are not entrepreneurial, managerial, or a significant factor in whether customers receive staking awards, rewards or the amount of rewards received. Service providers simply use publicly available software and basic computer equipment to perform validation services and do not perform any material efforts. These are IT services, not investment services. Okay, well, so if that's the case, then why does this even exist? Why do we have this earn program? Why is there staking? Why is there yield? These are IT services. And again, I'm not saying that I understand everything, but reading through this, I, I honestly feel like these people are completely freaking delusional. Why this matters. The purpose of securities law is to correct for imbalances in information. Trying to superimpose securities laws onto a process like staking doesn't help consumers at all. Ah, Coinbase is standing up for you, the little guy. That's right. They haven't been fleecing you on shit coins for the last seven years. No, no. Standing up for you. Unnecessarily aggressive mandates will prevent U.S. consumers from accessing basic crypto services in the U.S. and push users offshore. Ah, oh, there we go again to the unregulated platforms, those dangerous unregulated platforms. Coinbase supports sensible regulation in our industry, but regulation by enforcement that does nothing to help consumers and drives innovation offshore is not the answer. Getting it right on staking matters. Wow. You know what? That hit home. That absolutely hit home. All right. So we've already looked at the whole Coinbase earn garbage. I, I, I don't see how this is not a centralized platform that is providing a rate of return. To be perfectly honest, if you just held, let's just say, for example, if you just held Tether, okay? Because Tether is one of these things here that, that they talk about. Let, let's go take a look at it, okay? So Tether gives a, a DeFi yield, so to speak, right? But why? Why does Tether give a DeFi yield? Where does that yield actually come from? It's, I'm telling you, all of this stuff is smoke and mirrors. It, it is complete smoke and mirrors. Like, if you just hold Tether, you it, you don't get more Tether. <laughs> so, so obviously, you're going to a platform like this, you're providing your Tether, and they are doing something and you are getting more Tether back. Okay, we'll take Tether out of the equation. Let's look at Solana or, or Tezos, right? So again, right? What is happening in the background for you to receive 3.19% 3, 3 a year, right? What, what are you doing with Cosmos to receive 6.12% a year staking? What are you doing for that? How is that not just coming out of absolutely nowhere? What is Coinbase doing with that? Okay, guys, I, I thought it was important that we take a look at, at what is the Howey test, right? What is this thing used for? And why does this keep getting mentioned by Coinbase? Okay, let's dive into it. So 
The test applies to any contract, scheme, or transaction. The Howey test is important for situating blockchain and digital currency projects with investors and project backers. Certain cryptocurrencies and ICOs may be found to meet the definition of an investment contract under the test. An investment contract exists if there is an investment of money in a common enterprise with a reasonable expectation of profits to be derived from the efforts of others. Now, indeed, indeed, you are not investing in Coinbase, but you are indeed being promised a rate of return. You are indeed led to believe there is a reasonable expectation that you're going to get profits of some type. Understanding the Howey test. So here we go. The Supreme Court established four criteria to determine whether an investment contract exists. An investment contract is an investment of money in a common enterprise with the expectation of profit to be derived from the efforts of others. You are putting your shit coins into Coinbase's earn program. That is an investment of money, okay? The common enterprise is Coinbase's earn program. You are indeed expecting profit because they are telling you what the APY is. And indeed, those are from the efforts of others because we don't really know what they are doing with your money in the background in order to provide that, that yield, so to speak. Buyers only needed to invest capital to access an income stream. Hmm. Well, that kind of sounds like this. I just go and stake this and all of a sudden I, I get money back. And not only that, but what also continues is my stake continues to grow, which means the more it grows, the more I get back. Whether a digital asset qualifies as an investment contract largely turns on whether there is an expectation of profit to be derived from the efforts of others. For example, the purchasers of a digital asset may be relying on the effort of others if they depend on the project's backers to develop and maintain the digital network, especially in the early stages, rather than these tasks being performed by a dispersed community of unaffiliated users. The test is also met if the project backers take steps to support the price of the digital asset, such as by creating scarcity through token burning. Another way the efforts of others test is met is if the project's backers continue to act in a material role. So we can see here what is happening. There is a tiny little gray area that that Coinbase is is going to try to exploit. Okay, that that is actually exactly what they're trying to do. Okay, and their whole essentially their, their whole entire argument. Okay, their whole entire argument is that you are not investing in a common enterprise. Therefore, these other these other requirements for a Howey for a Howey test fall apart, okay? Because you're not investing in Coinbase. They're just providing the platform. Many, and I'm not justifying it. I'm not saying that that is valid, okay? But the truth of the matter is, is that many corporations use gray areas to get through different types of regulations. Uh, something that you hear very often in the corporate world is better to ask for forgiveness later than to ask for permission, okay? Because usually people will just say no. So what you do is you, you just do it. And when people see that it works, you just say, I'm sorry. You know, it's not so bad. Um, so look, I believe that Coinbase is exploiting that right now. Um, I also think that if I, if I was one of those people that had my money in one of these earn programs or one of these staking programs, I would seriously consider closing it down and moving it uh, and, and essentially converting it all back to BTC and storing it in cold storage. Um, look, we've already seen, we, we've already seen many other exchanges. Like I, I know that a lot of people always think that, oh no, no, these things happen to somebody else. Coinbase is too big. Coinbase is a public company. They're, they're not just going to disappear. Lehman Brothers was a publicly traded company. I know it has nothing to do with crypto, but where are they now? Some of the people listening to this right now won't even know who Lehman Brothers is because they're so young. So they're like, fuck is Lehman Brothers? Bear Stearns. Bear Stearns was a Wall Street darling. Gone. Okay. So don't think 
Don't think for a second, okay, that just because you're using this public institution that has all these bells and whistles that make you feel good inside, okay, that they are not and cannot wreck you. You need to remember their incentive, okay? Their incentive is to keep, is to keep their business going.